What's up everybody, my name is Aaron and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be going over my Eastern Conference standings predictions. Now this, I'm not going to hold you, it took me a while to come up with this list. I moved some teams around a lot, I bumped, bounced some ideas off some of my friends and um, let's get into it. Coming at number 15, I have the Brooklyn Nets. I don't really see them doing this much without Brook Lopez gone. I mean, I know they picked up deloading, but I, they, I just, that's it. Like, they have him and no one else, really. So I don't really see him doing much. I will see him, like, you know, blossoming and coming into his own. I think he's going to average 20 this year, but that's about it. Coming at number 14, I have the Orlando Magic. Once again, a team I don't see really doing much. I like the, I like the mix of Vucevic, Gordon, and Alfred Payton. I like those three, but they're still young, um, and they're just not going to do much this year. Coming in at number 13, I have the Atlanta Hawks. Um, that team is nowhere near the team that we saw, like, you know, 2013, 2012, when they were actually great. Um, the only thing that's left from that team back then is Schroeder and Bazemore. Everyone else is kind of gone. Um, and that team basically just had Schroeder and Bazemore. Coming in at number 12, we have the New York Knicks. You got Melo, you got Przingad. I don't really see them doing much. Um, yes, it's good that Phil Jackson's out of there, but Melo still wants to leave. And if he does leave before the All-Star break, they're definitely not getting hired at number 12. Coming in at number 11, we have the Indiana Pacers. Paul George is gone, but we still have a decent front court with um, Al Jefferson and Miles Turner. Um, Lance Stevenson is still there, kind of hold the rock a little bit, but I don't really see him doing much. Lance Stevenson was great a couple years ago. He left, thought he could be his own man, came back, and he wasn't the same. So I don't really see him doing much, but I, I, like, the, I like the front court. I like Miles Turner. I think he's going to be a nice big man in a couple years. Coming at number 10, we have the Chicago Bulls. And this one I had to go back and forth about a lot because they got rid of Rondo and Butler. But as long as Wade's still there, you know, he's going to give him 18 points. Um, Zach Levine's decent. Chris Dunn's decent. I don't think they're as bad as they want to be. I think they want to be worse than this so they can get some good draft picks. But I think they're going to stay around that 10 spot. Unless Dwayne Wade leaves, then they might move a little, you know, lower in the standings. But as long as Dwayne Wade's there, I think it's going to keep them in that 10 spot. Because he's going to be the savvy veteran that te teaches the young guys. Coming at number nine, we have the Philadelphia 76ers. And for me, they're a bit of a wild card because, you know, being from South Jersey, the Sixers fan that I am wants to feed into the hype and make them higher on my list, make them, a, you know, a playoff spot, at least number like seven. But being realistic, I haven't seen half their team play in the league. You know, uh, Simmons didn't play last year and B only played like 30-something games. Fultz is a rookie. Uh, Saric, you know, he balled last year, but he only balled after Sim um, and B went down. So... Like, if they gel together and everybody stays healthy, they're going to be higher than number nine. And I think they're going to make the playoffs. But because I haven't seen anybody yet, I only put them at number nine. Coming in at number eight, um, sneaking into the playoffs, I have the Charlotte Hornets. Now, hear me out. I think the addition of Dwight Howard to that team is going to be great. I think Kimba's a great point guard. I think they got a couple of pieces. Michael Cook Giltress is, a, is, you know, like, I kind of call him a gazelle. He can't shoot, but he can get up and down the floor and he can dunk, you know what I mean, play some defense. I think they're going to sneak into the playoffs simply because teams like the Bulls, the Pacers, aren't going to make the playoffs this year. Number seven, I had the Detroit Pistons. Now, hear me out. I know they've been trash for years, but this, I think, might be their year. Andre Drummond's coming into his own. Reggie Jackson is showing some bright lights. And the addition of A.B. Bradley, I think, is going to be huge for that team. And also, so many other teams aren't making the playoffs that's made in the past couple years. I think this might be the year they just sneak in there. Coming in number six, we have the Miami Heat. They almost stuck into the playoffs last year. They had a great run in the second half of the season. With their whole team being healthy this year, I definitely see them coming in, coming in, making the playoffs. I don't see them making it past the first round, though. They might. They're definitely not making it past the second. Coming in number five, we have a great up-and-coming team in the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis is a beast. Um, he was a good MVP. Kobe said, go get MVP this year. He's been putting up a lot of weight. I've been seeing him working out in the gym. He's been putting some shots up. He might have a little bit of a strap this year. Might be able to knock down a couple open threes better than he did the last couple years. Um, but that's a really fun team. Really exciting team to watch. Uh, I think they're going to be good this year. And at number four, we have the Washington Wizards. Arguably the best backcourt in the league between John Wall and Bradley Bill. But they lack some depth. And I think that lack of depth is going to stop them from breaking into the top three in the East. Coming in at number three, I have the Toronto Raptors. This is a great team. And by great team, I mean a great regular season team. Because we all know in the playoffs, either Lowry or DeRozan somehow figure out how to play basketball. And they choke in the playoffs. It's happened in the like, past three years. But when it comes to regular season, they're a great team. And they're going to be top. They're going to be number three this year. But at number two, I have the Boston Celtics. The addition of Gordon Hayward, Kyrie, I think it's going to be really good for that team. The big thing about this team, they have to gel early and fast. If they don't gel and they lose a couple of games that they shouldn't lose at the beginning of the season, I could see them dropping down to the third spot and the Raptors taking it simply because the Raptors 
had the chemistry already that the Celtics are going to need to build. Coming to number one, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Seems like whenever LeBron's on the team, they're almost guaranteed to be the first in the East since he's, you know, almost been in the league. The addition of D. Rose and Isaiah Thomas are huge. I personally think Isaiah Thomas is going to be the starter. D. Rose coming off the bench, that second unit, 18 points off the bench. Hey, that's a lot of points off the bench. Um, D. Rose, I'm not, I don't want to say it, say it, but he could be a contention for six men in a year. Um, if he does, you know, fully accept his role off the bench. I don't see them switching back and forth. D. Rose, you start to stay. Isaiah, you start to stay. It's going to mess up their chemistry. They can't do that. They got to say somebody is a starter and somebody is coming off the bench. Who that is, I think IT starts and D. Rose comes off the bench. So there you have it. My Eastern Conference standings predictions. If you disagree with me, you want to move a couple of teams around, let me know what your standings are in the comments below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next week. I'm out. Peace.